Welcome to the third part of Enterprise Architecture Basic. We are going to understand how to represent Enterprise Architecture by using Enterprise Architecture Development Language Archimate and by using tool Archie. We will try to create a small fragment of Enterprise Architecture, but to do this, you first have to do the following two things. One thing is to download the specification of Enterprise Architecture Description Language, which is available here. And also you have to download the tool and install the tool. The tool is called Archie. It's very simple, easy to use. So I think there will not be a big problem to work with it. Uh, currently, I su suggest you to pause uh, the video and uh, download these two things and install the tool and then proceed further. Uh, when you open the tool, it is uh, now necessary to provide a place where we are putting our enterprise architecture model. Uh, for this, you go to Files, take new one and uh, give the name to it. I have given name Archimate. You can give some other name if you wish. When this is done, then we can proceed uh, for some uh, specific things for understanding how to use the tool. So we will try to get acquainted with the tool by looking at its palette. A palette is situated on the right side. I hope you see it there. And first of all, we will look at uh, relationships which we can use in the enterprise architecture. Uh, you remember that relationships, they are real, very important, and there are quite many different types of relationships, and you can learn more about them in the specification of the language. Uh, but for us, it is important that we have some specific uh, specialization relations, which uh, gives an opportunity to show classification. We have aggregation relations, for example, here, which uh, gives an opportunity to show part of relations and many other relations. Here is also a small group with nodes and it is possible to group elements by, by using this element. You put in one group several elements. Also, there is a specific line for connections when you want to introduce some extra connections to the ones which are prescribed by the language. I want also to say something about colors. In Archie 2, there are specific colors used for uh, different levels of architecture. And so yellow color goes for business architecture, uh, blue color goes for uh, application level of the architecture, which in uh, TOGAF is called information systems architecture, and um, green color goes for technology architecture. And now let us proceed to look at the palette further. We will have a further look to the palette now. The Archimate language actually prescribes three types of elements. These are active elements, these are elements that do something, these are functional elements which show that something happens, and there are passive elements uh, which are sort of the, the objects over which the specific actions are taken. So we start with active structure elements at the business layer. So business layer, active structure elements. And here we can see actors, which can stay for specific individuals or units or, 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 or departments of the enterprise. There are roles, which mainly uh, show the responsibilities uh, of the actors. And there are also collaboration, which shows that there are specific activities that can per be performed only by cooperating and uh, cooperate several roles. There are also two elements which are sort of relatively uh, active. Uh, these are interfaces. Uh, this business interface is a point of access where a business service is made available to the environment. And there is location, which is a conceptual point or extent in space. Now let us turn to the behavioral or functional elements. So among these elements, we can see function. So this is a business function. 
uh, that groups behavior based on chosen set of criteria. Then there is business process. And this business process shows ordering of activities. And there is also business interaction, which are activities which are performed by several, uh, several performers. And at the end of the discussion on business layer elements, there are passive structure elements like products. Product is very interesting element here because product can uh, include many different other things there, like services, um, like, like uh, documents and so on. There is a representation which shows a perceptible form of the information carried by business object. Um, so here you can see this representation. And there is an object, a business object, which is passive element that has relevance from the uh, point of view of business. And uh, most often it's data. Yeah? We can have data and there are different representations of the data. If you want to know more about this, you shall look at the specification. Of course, I didn't name all the elements here, uh, just some of them those who will be most useful for us for our exercise. Have you succeeded to find all elements of the business level? If yes, then it is time to proceed further. And uh, when we are speaking about application layer elements, then here we can see uh, software components. We can see services which are provided by um, software components. And we can see data objects, which are passive elements suitable for automated processing. Usually, uh, data objects correspond to particular business objects. And we can see here that this application component, it is active resource because it does something. Uh, this is application service, which is behavioral element because it shows the action. And there is data object, which is passive, passive, passive resource. It itself doesn't do anything, but it is used in different activities or different processes. Now let us consider technology layer elements. Here's a central element is node. A node, as you can see here, is a computational resource upon which artifacts may be stored or deployed for execution. It's active resource. But these artifacts, artifacts are here. It is a physical piece of data that is used or produced in a software development process or by deployment and operation of system. And this artifact is considered a passive resource. Also, we have here device, which is hardware resource upon which artifacts may be stored or deployed for execution. And sometimes device, includes also representation of operating system. At the technology layer, we also have communication paths. And the communication path is a link between two or more nodes through which these nodes can exchange data. And this communication path is active resource. Also, we have a network which is a communication medium uh, between two or more devices. Also, it is an active resource. And we have services, uh, infrastructure services in this case, uh, which, uh, which shows the functionality which uh, infrastructure gives for application layer. Uh, and this is behavioral element. The Archimate language also has some extensions. These three layers which we discussed, uh, business layer, application layer, and technology layers, this is like a core of this language, but the language also has extensions. And uh, one of these extensions is motivational extension, which has elements that relate to business model. And um, these are stakeholders reflected in this motivational extension. Uh, there are such things as requirements, constraints, uh, you can see also the goals here, and so on. Drivers, 
principles and that the principles is normative property of all systems in a given context or the way in which they are realized. So the principles are good to state specific constraints or uh, compliance rules and, and so on. So, um, uh, the Archimate language also have implementation and migration extension. This is meant for changing enterprise architecture. So, for example, when we want to come from a this state of enterprise architecture to to be state of enterprise architecture, we do it in several steps. And the plateau then means some uh, relatively stable state of enterprise architecture, which uh, which exists a particular slice of time. And uh, this difference between one specific uh, state of the architecture and another state of architecture we call a gap. And the gap, we usually uh, obtain this gap by analysis of enterprise architecture. Also in this extension, there are such things as work packages and deliverables. Now, here you can see uh, again the example of enterprise architecture, where we can see elements of all the uh, three uh, core levels of enterprise architecture, and uh, they are represented by Archimate language. What we will do now, we will try to represent in Archimate language by using Archie tool the small process from Colibri introductory level enterprise architecture. Just this specific business process model. To compare how this model looks in the tool, uh, I had created it before and in uh, Archie tool, we can consider this picture. So the, 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 the elements will look a bit differently, but practically they can, uh, they can represent the same things. These are steps which follow one another. So now you are acquainted with all palette of Archie tool and we are ready to proceed to modeling as such. Now let us start building the model. The idea is that currently we together will construct a small part of enterprise architecture in Archie and then you will have the task where you will be able to do it on your own and then we will see what is the result of your performance with the tool Archie. So now we are in Archie. Please try to make this process practically in the same way as you see it here. Uh, just uh, pause the video and try to make it. Have you succeeded to do the same thing which is on the screen? If not, please try to do it and then proceed further. This is just suggestion. A bit about relationships. You can see that here is bigger process and there are smaller processes in. So what you can do, you can put these elements into bigger process. And uh, you can use aggregate relationship for this. Aggregation in uh, Archie can be represented in two ways. One way is when you are just putting one one thing, for example, this thing into the bigger process. And there is also another way how to show it. If you will take one element and drag it now out, uh, then you will see uh, that it shows this aggregation or composition relationship. So either you show it this way or you show it as it was in the previous slide, the meaning is the same. Now, Try to construct this picture. So, for example, we are adding some elements to the um, business process, which we have already drawn. And um, we are adding that uh, we know that the one who watches uh, the video is student. And uh, 
there is a service presentation of part one, which is uh, made by another process, which is performed by teacher, by operator and producent of these slides, or uh, better to say, uh, producer of videos. So this is one process which provides service for the student so that the student can watch video and try to represent this thing in the tool. When it is done again, proceed further. Now please try to represent these things. You can see that we are showing not only the business level, but we have added also these uh, other levels, like uh, you see here there are um, specific applications and there are specific devices which we are using uh, for, uh, for, for things, like for submitting the answers we need Moodle, and this Moodle is on the server of Aalborg University. When you are ready with this, we can proceed further. <laughs> so now we have created a small fragment of enterprise architecture. What else I want to tell you about Archimate as a language? Uh, the specification shows also such thing as viewpoints or views on architecture. The viewpoint uh, is a means to focus on particular aspects of the architecture and uh, these aspects are determined by the concerns of, a stake of stakeholders um, who have some kind of uh, things which they are interested in with respect to the enterprise architecture. We considered architecture views also in the introductory part of enterprise architecture. So if you are interested in these views, uh, you can look at them in the specification. You will see this uh, business process viewpoint, product viewpoint and other viewpoints. After constructing this small example, you also will have a task to construct your own part of enterprise architecture and this you will have to export in some way. And uh, I suggest to use this approach that you take this export and then uh, show view as, uh, as image to clipboard um, when you have selected the, 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 uh, your drawing uh, then you get it into the clipboard and then you can export it into the Word or any other um, other other files like PowerPoint and afterwards it will be possible for us to see what you have made. One more thing about Archie tool is that there are some other useful things also. For example, you can see that there are business model canvas available. So if you want to make canvas model, then also you can use for this RG tool. So RG is a tool, Archimate is a language and Archimate is available not only in RG tool. Uh, there are very many tools, um, more sophisticated tools, more advanced tools, which uh, give an opportunity to work with this language. So, um, if you work with Bizagi or many other tools, also it will be possible to work with them. This is the end of the third part of Enterprise Architecture Basic from the point of what you can learn from the slides. And now you can proceed to the exercise more complex exercise and how to do this exercise, it is described in the next slide. So your task is to construct a fragment of Colibri Enterprise Architecture. To do this, I suggest that you read Colibri Student Guide one more and choose some aspect from the, uh, from the Colibri Enterprise which you want to represent in Enterprise Architecture. Then you develop a fragment of Colibri 
as this enterprise architecture using Archi2. And uh, you can extend by 20 elements the existing model, or you can create new elements from scratch. It's up to you. But there are some requirements. You have to have three layers at least. At each layer, you have to three, uh, have at least three uh, types of elements, and you have to have at least 20 elements altogether. And afterwards, it is necessary to export the model you have created into Word document and upload into model for evaluation. So, we are at the end of the basic level of Enterprise Architecture module. Thank you for attention and uh, you are very welcome to the advanced level where we will learn more about how to use Enterprise Architecture and we will also learn how to use more sophisticated uh, and also more advanced tool of Enterprise Architecture Modeling. <music>